there, this is Yanis with episode number 13 of the Archive Basic tutorial series. In the last two episodes, we learned how to use branches to manipulate narrative flow and player choices using if, else if, and else statements. In this episode, we'll see how we can use ArcScript to program logic inside the element's content. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video and every video of the basic tutorial series. We have already used a couple of lines of code inside elements when we assign values to our variables as in has underscore key becomes true. But now it's time to do a little more. First of all, we can use ArcScript inside an element to manipulate the rendered text, that is, the text the player sees. This is classic practice in interactive fiction. A location description can be different if it's day or night, or if you visit for the first or second time, etc. In our game, we can use variables to add a little color to our encounters with the NPCs, the NPCs being, of course, the non-player characters. For example, the shower choice here. Instead of ending the game abruptly and painfully, if the player chooses not to shower, uh, we can still get into the apartment, but the player's choice will influence the dialogue with Horace. So we need to add another variable that stores the information of whether we've showered or not. So let's create a new variable and call it shower taken. It will be a boolean and the initial value, yes, it is false. Now we go to the beginning board here. Let's set this as the starting element. And in the element about the shower, um, let's get Jillian out of the way. Uh, okay. And the element about the shower requires a code segment that assigns the value of true to the shower taken. Okay, to the shower taken variable. And then we can still go to the apartment. So we connect the shower element, of course, to, to the Linetti. Yeah, let's connect this to the appointment. So we are in our office. We choose to take a shower and then go to the appointment. Or we can choose to go straight to the appointment. Let's get some of those out of the way. Actually, what's going on here? Horace Linetti opens but refuses to speak to you. No, we don't want that anymore. And we don't have a place for that either. So you go to the Linetti siblings apartment. Okay, we can keep uh, the walk away option as a bad ending, but not a, well, not the horrible death one, but failure to enter the apartment. Okay, this will do. So take a shower first, then go to the appointment, and then we have the option to go to walk away or to knock the door. So we can go here and knock the door. Now, we want to change the content of this element a little depending on whether we have showered or not. So let's see what we'll do. We can have the first sentence to always appear. Horace Linetti opens the door and lets you in. Then we want a different reaction depending on whether we've showered or not. To do this, we need an if statement that checks that. Therefore, let's go here, create an empty line between the two paragraphs, and we insert a code segment. And we need to type if. Now we see that the moment we type the word if, Arcweave increases the indent of the following paragraphs. If we actually add more paragraphs here, 
they have the same indent. So let's type our condition. So if shower taken, which means if we have showered, let's say that Horace complains about us being late. Now, we're not done yet. We see this um, warning symbol here at the lower right corner of the element. So there is something missing. And what's missing is the closure of the if statement. To close an if statement, we use the keyword and if. So let's create another segment of script here and type and if. The moment we finish typing the word and if, Arquive understands the closure and resets the indentation according to what it was before the if statement. The content that follows is again positioned back at the default indentation settings. Now let's see how this works. Uh, the start is here. Now if we shower, we get this. All right, let's play it. So we click on our haiku. Uh, I don't know why this is still here. And then we choose first, let's choose to go straight to the appointment. Knock the door and Horace opens. Opens the door, lets you in. And you find my grandmother's ring, look around, etc., etc. We go to the living room. Okay, let's restart. Now, let's take a shower first. Go to the appointment. Knock the door. And Horace opens the door. You're late, he says. Here it is. As you marvel, blah, blah, blah. And then we can continue. But let's just go to the element uh, for a moment. Because... The first paragraph gets rendered in the same line with the second and the third. Look at this. It's all one big paragraph here. We actually need to keep this in mind when we are writing. When code segments divide text, the text still gets rendered in the same line. If we need a paragraph break, we need to manually create one by hitting the return key. So a question arises, where do we want the paragraph break? Inside the if statement? After? Before? I say we probably want your late to go together with Horace, in, uh, with Horace opening the door and letting us in since all of those are uh, his own actions. Then, when we marvel at the design, we can have this as a separate paragraph. So, we can do a paragraph break here. And, switching back to the play mode, we see that indeed it looks like this. So Horace says we're late if we have taken the shower. If we haven't taken a shower, he can comment on our hygiene. To do that, we need to add an else statement. So you're late, he says. And let's add a new line. Type else. And then we can turn this into a code segment using uh, the shortcut. Another line. And then we'll leave and if as it is. And uh, let me know if you find my grandmother's ring. We leave this here because it's good to know the objective. So the player has to find the ring. Now let's see how this looks like. This is what happens if we have showered. Let's restart and let's not shower. Just knock the door. Horace leaning uh, the door and lets you in. Good lord, you smell as you spend the night off his floor, he says, fanning the air with his hand. Well, I think that works, right? Another thing we can see now is how nested if statements work. In other words, if statements that are inside other if statements. Uh, for example, let's go to the bathroom. And to the bathroom. Here. 
And yeah, let's add a comment about the bathtub that is different if we have taken the shower or not. And if we have found the key or not. Let's give some more space to this element. And marble and gold. You never really understood some people's extravagance. The bathtub is huge. Now, if we have showered in the office, we can say else Okay, needs more space. And we need the end if. Whoops. Okay. Well, nothing new so far, but what if we want now some extra text to appear only if we have showered, but haven't found the key yet. So let's go to the first if, and after um, showering in one's office, we hit return and add another if statement. If we haven't found the key, Okay, and we can write this using the NOT operator, which is the exclamation mark. If NOT has key, so this means if has key is false, or we can actually also write this if NOT has key. Okay. And we have to close this with an end if, otherwise the else gets um, moved to this if statement. So we need to close the end if, and now else goes back to where it belonged, to this one. Hmm, this is it. So, okay, let's see this once more. We get inside the bathroom, we see this text no matter what. Now, if we've taken a shower, we also see this. It must be such a different experience from showering in one's office. Plus, if we don't have the key, we get also the response of, but you need to focus, see if you can find something here. Okay? If we have the key, we just don't get this response. Now, if we haven't showered, we ignore all that and go here. Hmm, you wonder if it's too much asking the Linettis if you could take a quick shower here. You'll do them a favor after all. I thought I had this italics before. Great. Now let's run this and see if it works. Take a shower. Okay, marble and gold. The bathtub is huge. It must be such a different experience from showering in one's office. But you need to focus, see if you can find anything here. So examine the mirrors, examine the corner, find the key. And the bathtub is huge. It must be such a different experience from showering in one's office. Full stop. Okay, now let's restart. Don't take a shower. Marble and gold. Hmm. The bathtub is huge. Hmm. You wonder if it's too much asking the Linettis if you could take a quick shower. Okay? So this works. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, and it works in all if statements, whether in an element or in a branch, is how to combine conditions using the logical operators AND and OR. For example, what if we want some text to appear when we are in the kitchen, but only if we haven't showered and we are carrying the ring? Okay. This doesn't necessarily make much sense. I only suggest it to demonstrate combined conditions. To do this, we need to add a line of code here in the kitchen that says... If not, 
So if we haven't showered and the ring state is one, which means, so if we haven't showered and have the ring with us, then, and then close the if statement. Uh, so if we haven't, if we haven't showered, let's play this. So we don't get a shower, haven't showered, go to the appointment, knock the door, look around, go to the kitchen, we don't see that. Okay, go to the living room, go to the bathroom. We still don't see it here because, yes, we haven't showered and we don't have the ring, so search the cabinets, unlock. Wow, back. And now you may stink, but look at that ring, all right? Now, this if statement includes a logical conjunction. And it is true only if both conditions are satisfied, if both this is true and this is true. We need to be both without a shower and with the ring. The keyword AND can also be written as the double ampersand, which in some programming languages is the symbol for the logical conjunction. And then there is the logical disjunction, as in if we haven't showered or the ring state is one. Really no meaning to any of that, but you know, I'm just putting it here for educational purposes. And this is the logical disjunction, uh, it's the keyword OR, and it can also be written um, with the double vertical line, like this. Now, this statement only appears if we have not showered or we have found the key, the ring, sorry. So, since all this doesn't make much sense, I'll just delete it. So that was it for this episode. We now know how to use if statements inside both branches and elements. In the next episode, we'll have a look at two useful functions that will make our text and outcomes a little more dynamic. If you're finding these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to Arqueave's official YouTube channel. You can also follow Arqueave on Twitter and Facebook. Let the games begin. Thank you for watching, and we'll speak very, very soon.